Hello friends, welcome to today's machine learning class and in this class we will see another important topic from second unit, uh, Bayes theorem and concept learning. Under this topic we will see the maximum a posteriori hypothesis, after that brute force base concept learning. First let us see maximum a posteriori hypothesis that is map hypothesis. Okay, here we are having a set of candidate hypothesis which is defined as capital H. Okay, from this capital H, we need to find the most probable hypothesis that is small h. Now, the small h is the subset of capital H with the given observed data D. We know D is the training data set. Okay, as per the machine language, the D is nothing but the training data. Here, we should have at least one maximally probable hypothesis that is small h if there are more numbers. If there are more number of small h, at least one should be maximally probable, okay, which is called as maximum a posteriori hypothesis, okay. You can expect this from two mark question, okay. Now, we need to determine this h map by using the Bayes theorem. We know already what is Bayes theorem, isn't it? So, this is called as Bayes theorem. So, now, by using this Bayes theorem, we need to find this h map. Okay, H map which is equal to R map of H belongs to capital H, capital P of H gives D. Okay, so here what is this H gives D? This is the posteriori hypothesis, this one, which is equal to, which is equal to probability of H gives D into probability of H divided by probability of D as per Bayes theorem. Okay. Now, we need to remove this probability of D because this is independent of this probability of H. So, this is a constant value. This is a constant value. So, we can remove this constant while finding this um, H map. Okay. Now, this is our formula for H map, right. And next, we will move to the brute force base concept learning. Okay, here, the first one is, for each hypothesis H in H, that is small H in the capital H, calculate the posteriori probability. So, this is called as base learning, base theorem, sorry. And second one, out of this hypothesis, H map with the highest posteriori probability, that is H map is equal to arc map, H belongs to capital H, P of H gives D. Okay. Now, this algorithm may require significant computations because it applies Bayes theorem to each hypothesis in capital H to calculate P of H gives D. So, in this algorithm, we need to specify the value of P of H and P of D gives H. Because by using these two values, we need to find out the H map, right? With the following assumptions. What are the assumptions we are having? First one is the training data D should be noise-free data. So, we need to select the training data from the entire population and that should be noise-free. That is DI which is equal to C of XI. That is from the XI, C is the candidate. Xi is the candidate of the entire population that is assigned to Di, that is training data, right? The collection of training data is called as capital D. And second one, the target concept C is contained in the hypothesis space H, okay? Because all the candidates should be inside the hypothesis space. And next one, we have no priori reason to believe that any hypothesis is more probable than any other. Okay, we need to treat all the hypotheses equally. So, with these three assumptions, we, sh we should specify the P of H. With no uh, knowledge of uh, one hypothesis is more likely than other. All the hypotheses should be different. Okay, and we need to assign the same priority, that is same prior probab uh, probability to every hypothesis in H in the capital H. Okay, for example, uh, probability of getting 2 in rolling dice is 1 by 6. Okay, and the probability of getting number 3 in rolling dice is also 1 by 6. 
and probability of getting number 6 in rolling dice is also 1 by 6. Okay, so we have to assign the same probability for all the hypotheses because the sum of all those hypotheses will be 1. Right? So, P of H which is equal to 1 by cardinality of H. 1 by cardinality of H. Right? Next, P of D gives H which is the probability of observing the target value capital D. Capital D which is equal to D1 to Dm. That is, from the entire population, from this is the entire population, we are going to pick only the training data, some data, training data, okay? And that is collectively called as capital D with the hypothesis H, okay? With the hypothesis H holds this particular data. And now the probability of observing classification DI, that is a particular value of training data given H, which is equal to P of di given H is just 1 when if di equal to H of xi. If di equal to H of xi. And if it is not di equal to H of xi, then this value is 0. Okay. That is, if the capital D gives H, probability of capital D gives H which is equal to 1 if di equal to h of xi for all di in capital D. Okay, that is this di should be selected from the entire population and this population value which is equal to capital D then the hypothesis value should be 1. Otherwise, if it is error data, otherwise means if it is error data. If it is error data, then we will get 0. Right? The probability of data D given hypothesis H is 1 if D is consistent with H. If D is consistent with H, that is if D is reliable to H, then the hypothesis will be 1, otherwise 0. When we will get 0, if there is some noise, then we will get 0. Right? Here we are having two cases. The first one is if H is inconsistent, then this P of D gives H which is equal to 0. Otherwise, if H is consistent, then P of D gives H which is equal to 1. Okay, two cases are there. If it is inconsistent, if it is inconsistent, then P of D gives H which is equal to 0. Next, we need to substitute this value with the base theorem with the base theorem. P of H gives D which is equal to what is P of D gives H? That is 0. 0 into P of H divided by P of D which is equal to 0 because we are multiplying the value 0 with P of H. Okay. If H is inconsistent with 0 then the P of H gives D which is equal to 0. Right. Next if H is consistent <coughs> If H is consistent, then the prior probability that is P of D gives H which is equal to 1. Now, we just substitute this value with the base theorem. Okay. So, 1 into, already we know P of H which, which is equal to 1 by cardinality of H. Okay. Divided by P of D. We are going to substitute that value also with the uh, P of H. Right? And now, P of D, which is equal to the version space of HD divided by cardinality of H. Okay? Now, we just remove this 1 by H from both sides. 1 by H from both sides. Right? Then we get P of H gives P of H gives D, which is equal to 1 by version space of H comma D if H is consistent with D. Okay. Where the version space H comma D which is the version space and is subset of hypothesis H that is the capital H from that which are consistent with the D. That is we are going to select 
some part of data from the entire uh, population and these are error free error free data and if these data are consistent then p of h gives d which is equal to 1 by version space of h comma d and now uh, the sum of all hypotheses of p of h gives d that must be 1 because we should take only the consistent uh, hypothesis from with d right and here already we know we are having two cases of p of d gives h that is 0 and 1 and p of h i which is nothing but 1 by cardinal t of h okay we are going to substitute these values and we are going to sum those values that is sum of uh, h i belongs to version space of h comma d 1 into 1 by cardinal t of h that is we are going to substitute 1 with the place of p of h gives d sorry p of d gives h uh, we are going to substitute 1 first after that we are going to substitute 0 in the place of p of d gives h right and this will be 0 because anything multiplied by 0 is 0. Now the value is summation of h i belongs to version space of h comma d 1 into 1 by h. Okay. Now the value is cardinal t of v s that is version space of h comma d divided by cardinal t of h. Okay. That is p of d. Now we apply this into Bayes theorem which implies the posterior probability p of h gives d under the assumptions p of h and p of d gives h which is equal to p of h gives d which is equal if, if it is consistent then the value is 1 by version space of h comma d okay otherwise this value is 0 that is if it is inconsistent then value is 0 okay Okay, here initially all the hypotheses have same probability. Okay, and as the training data accumulates, that is, we will take only the training data from the entire population. Now, we know the posterior probability of inconsistent hypothesis is zero. Okay, if the probability is inconsistent, then uh, the hypothesis value is zero and the total probability is summing to one. All the sum of probability value will be 1 and which is shared equally among the remaining consistent hypothesis. Okay. Just now we have seen an example for this that is rolling the dice problem. So in the rolling dice it is having 6 sides. All the sides we are having the unique values. Hence the probability of getting any number is 1 by 6. Okay. The sum of all 1 by 6 which is equal to 6 times we need to add 1 by 6 which is equal to 1, right? So now we need to evaluate the posterior probability that is P of H gives D with the increasing training data. If training data is increased then what will be there? Initially all the hypotheses have same probability that is we need to uh, distribute 1 for all the hypothesis. P of H which is equal to 1 initially. And now we increase the training data into D1. Okay, then P of H gives D1. We need to compute. Okay, the posterior probability become 0 if it is inconsistent hypothesis. Okay, if D1 is inconsistent, then the hypothesis will become 0. Otherwise, if the posterior probability is summing to 1, which is shared equally among the remaining hypothesis, remaining D1. So, this will become 0 and only the consistent will get 1. Right. And now, we need to increase this training data into D2. The training data will be increased to D2. Okay. Now, all the inconsistent hypothesis become 0. Okay. The remaining everything will become 0 because these are all inconsistent values. Okay, otherwise only the consistent is getting 1, summing is 1, okay. 
up to this we have seen the map hypothesis and the brute force base concept learning from base theorem and concept learning and you can expect this question from five mark question in the university examination right for more information please go through your textbook thank you